Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, hi, I'm Sam. Welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. For today's video, as we guys can see by the title down there, today I will be talking about what makes somebody a serial killer and the type of different serial killers that there are out there, as well as mass murderers and how somebody would fit into what category. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe and the little button down there. And if you want to learn more about serial killers, then just keep on watching. So I wanted to throw this extra video because with the new series that I'm going to be talking about like serial killers or like murders um, apart from like the urban legends I wanted to throw this video in and kind of like explain um, about like serial killers maybe you've never heard about um, like what makes up a serial killer and like how they are classified which some of this information it was new to me when I was researching it and I thought it was like super interesting because I had the conversation of like whether it's like nurture or nature so if they're like born killers or you know they learn through nurture and so I decided to do this video so you could learn um, about what makes up a serial killer, how they are classified, because I did not know this, but the FBI actually has, like there's like three different types of serial killers, which it was super interesting to me. One of my favorite shows is Criminal Minds. Um, I know, you know, it's a favorite show for a lot of people. I am now in the Matthew Gray Gubbler TikTok, <laughs> and I see like so much, so many TikToks about Criminal Minds, and I finished this series about I want to say like a month ago and one of my favorite things about that show I mean it's a obviously it's a show so it's not complete reality but I do like that they you know explain kind of like why the serial killer is like that and that specific serial killer or why they do the crimes that they do so what makes someone a serial killer since I started researching for the series most of the people that I've learn about now um most of them have like troubled childhoods um in some way or another although there is no exact science um as to what makes someone a serial killer there are definitely some signs that can tell us the potential of somebody that can you know eventually turn into a serial killer extreme antisocial behavior is one possible indicator that an individual may have a problem so just because somebody has antisocial behavior that doesn't mean exactly that they're going to turn into a serial killer antisocial personality disorder is a personality disorder described in the dsm which is the diagnostic diagnostic and statistical manual of mental disorders and it's like a huge book where psychologists and psychiatrists have it's like a list of all the disorders and how somebody can get diagnosed diagnosed with those disorders so somebody that has antisocial personality disorder is a person that shows no remorse or guilt other signs from antisocial personality disorder can be lying um, extreme aggressiveness failure to conform to social norms and irresponsibility serial killers often seek complete control over another human and they enjoy watching them in private settings without their knowledge. One of the most common warning signs uh, that a potential serial killer may display is a fascination for fire. A psychopath's interest borders on the line of being a potential arsonist which means somebody that enjoys setting things on fire. They will set anything in sight on fire with the goal of destroying it. Another common indicator of serial killing behavior is killing or intentionally harming animals. They may provoke or even torture cats, dogs, and other animals that it may be easy for them to have access to. And I feel like this is one of the most common things that I personally have heard about serial killers. And it is something that you often hear about um, in documentaries or movies that they from when they were little or adolescent they would kill animals like i don't know dogs cats or and even after their actions they would not show any type of remorse 
or any type of guilt. According to the FBI, there are three types of categories in which serial killers fall into according to how the, they carry out their crimes. Those three types are the organized, the disorganized, and the medical serial killer. The first one we're going to talk about is the medical serial killer, which is the more rare type of serial killer. They purposely get involved in the medical field or the medical industry so that they can carry out their horrific intentions. This type of serial killer feels that they are hidden because obviously they, most of them work at a hospital setting and it is not uncommon for people to pass away in a hospital. They are highly intelligent and they know exactly how to conceal in order to uh, carry out their murders. If it appears that a victim has died of a natural death, there will be no reason to suspect of any, any foul play and nobody will be searching for a murderer or a serial killer. The next serial killer is the, the organized killer. Now, this is the most difficult one to identify and capture because they usually are highly intelligent and they are very well organized to the point of being very meticulous with their murders. Every detail of the murder is very well planned out and the killer takes every precaution on not leaving any evidence that can incriminate them in the murder. It is common for this type of psychopath to watch their victim for several days to to find someone that they would consider to be a good target. Once the victim is chosen, the killer will kidnap them, often through some type of ploy, to decide to gain their sympathy, take them to another location where they will be committing the murder. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Ted Bundy, but I will be doing a video on him, but he usually would fake either his leg was broken or his arm was broken in order to lure his victims. So once a person has been killed, the perpetrator will usually take precautions to ensure that the body is not found until they want it to be found. A criminal like this usually takes a lot of pride in what they consider their work and they tend to pay close attention to the media and the news to hear about their murders. One of their motivating factors may be to stump the law officers who are trying to solve their crimes. The next type of serial killer we're going to be talking about is the disorganized killer. As you guys can tell by the name, they rarely plan out their murders. They're more like on the spot serial killers. Most often the people that they kill are just people that are in the wrong place at the wrong time. This type of serial killer tends to strike random whenever an opportunity arises. They take no steps in order to cover up for their crimes and they tend to move often in order to prevent getting captured. This type of serial killer usually has low IQ and tends to be very antisocial. They have very few friends and family or no family at all. They don't like to stay in the same place for a long time. These killers are prone to say that they have no recollection of their murders or that they were motivated by voices that they heard in their heads or some other type of imaginary source. I do want to talk about the difference between serial killer and a mass murderer because obviously a mass murderer is not a serial killer. A serial killer is defined by a person who murders three or more people in a period of one month, usually with a cooling period where they have no murders. For a serial killer, the other murders must be separate events. And most often they become egocentric individuals. And like I mentioned, an example of this is Ted Bundy. Serial killers often employ a mask of sanity in order to hide their true psychopathic tendencies and appear normal, even charming, like Ted Bundy. People say that Ted Bundy was extremely charming the way that he would talk to his victims and people around him. And that's why you couldn't ever imagine that he was a serial killer. So a mass murderer kills people um, at the same time in the same location. Some exceptions, many mass murderers either end up dead by killing themselves or committing suicide or death by the police that are trying to secure the area. 
the motives of mass murderers they're less obvious than of a serial killer about 96.5 of mass murderers are male and most often are not clinically psych psychotic mass murderers tend to be paranoid individuals with acute behavioral or social disorders they also tend to display psychopathetic tendencies such as being cruel manipulative however most mass murderers are social misfits or loners and are usually triggered by some type of uncontrollable event serial killers often commit murders over a period of time uh, many times in different places while mass murderers kill in a same location with a time frame so well, that's it for today's video i really hope you guys enjoyed and actually learned the differences between these serial killers if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and the little button down there if there are some cases that you would like me to cover please don't forget to leave them down in the comment section and until then i'll see you guys in my next one